picking up where we left off, part D, we're trying to find this limit. Uh, the limit of sine of x as x approaches infinity. Hmm, okay. Uh, yeah, definitely changing things up here with the trig function. So let's see, as the value of x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and we're plugging it into sine, what, what's happening with the sine of x? And the important, what we're looking for is the important aspect, is it headed towards, is it tending towards one y value? Or maybe it's tending towards infinity or negative infinity. And well, no, sine x, we know it, it oscillates, right? Um, it has that periodic motion. It stays between negative 1 and 1. So what's that going to mean for this limit if it doesn't tend towards one number? And maybe you know it's a does not exist. For a limit to exist, it needs to be going to one location, either a horizontal asymptote, or maybe it's infinity or negative infinity. So it's uh, D and E, the reasoning, it does, this sine X does not tend to one Y value as X approaches infinity. And, you know, we can think about that graphically. There's sine X, you know, it just does that pattern. So as we go further out, it's just gonna repeat that. It's never going to level off at a horizontal asymptote. Okay, okay, so that's what's going on with sine of x. What if we, you know, just kind of messed with that a little bit, did a variation on sine x? How about this one? The limit as x approaches negative infinity, so we're kind of changing that too, but all right, we've got the sine of x divided by x to the third. Mm, okay, well... We know that as x goes to negative infinity, sine is still going to stay between negative 1 and 1. So does that just mean that this whole thing is D and E? Can we ignore the rest of it? In this case, no. Let's take a look. So we know sine x stays between negative 1 and 1. But what about the, what's happening with the x cubed? Well, if x is approaching negative infinity, x to the third, well, a negative to the third is still negative. So that's approaching negative infinity. And because we are dividing by that very big negative number, the numerator is caught between negative one and one, but we've got a denominator getting bigger and bigger and bigger in the negative direction. So what does that mean for the whole thing? Oh, it looks like I didn't write it yet. It's gonna equal zero. So that numerator didn't have to stay at one value because we're dividing by bigger and bigger denominators. Uh, it's, it's still going to approach zero at the end of the day. Okay. Interesting. So the sneaky. What else do we have? Okay. Part F is going to start... Um, we're going to have about three, I think it's three, maybe four examples of problems um, that are going to be similar, a similar approach to part F here. Uh, we've got a rational function. So the limit as x approaches zero, or excuse me, as x approaches infinity for 2x minus 1 over 7x plus 3. Okay, how are we going to approach this? You may have had a similar discussion in pre-calc on questions like this with end behavior. Uh, but I'm going to show you what um, a lot of times pre-calc instructors don't go into some of the algebraic details. Um, we are going to do that here. So how would we approach this? If we thought of plugging in, if you will, infinity... Well, let's see, 2 times infinity is infinity, infinity minus 1 is infinity. So we'd get infinity on the top. We'd get infinity on the bottom, 7 times infinity plus 3. So that's kind of the first thing we notice. If we try to just plug in, 
we're not really plugging in infinity. We're imagining values of x getting bigger and bigger and bigger and what's happening, but essentially it's the same thing. That gives us infinity over infinity. Now here's the deal. It's tempting to just say we know the answer at this point. Infinity over infinity. But we don't. Okay. What that will equal depends on the specific functions back here, or function. I should not have put a plural on that. Well, I guess functions does make sense because it's like numerator, denominator. I'm going to leave it. It depends on your numerator and denominator. Okay. Sometimes what would give you infinity over infinity ends up equaling infinity when you look closely at the individual parts. Sometimes infinity over infinity ends up equaling zero. And other times it ends up equaling a number other than zero. So we need to look at the specifics and we're, we're going to use some algebra to help us out. Here's what we're going to do. Here's our approach. Okay, use algebra to rewrite this. Okay, so what is what's the technique? What what does that mean? Use algebra. Uh, how are we gonna how are we gonna rewrite this? This is the trick. We're gonna divide each term. There are four terms. We're gonna divide each term by the highest power of x in the denominator. Okay, so just go with me for a second, and you'll see how. Not only can we take the limit, but just why why this is the trick, okay? Divide each of these by the highest power of x in the denominator. Well, what is the highest power of x in our denominator? Well, it's x to the first, right? Here we're going to divide simply by x. Okay. So I need to get my next page. Let's kind of take this thing, slide it up. Here's what we're going to do. So I've got my 2x minus 1 over 7x plus 3. I'm going to divide each term by x. So that gives me 2 minus 1 over x, 7, and plus 3 over x. Okay, so it's algebraically equivalent. Now we're going to perform the limit on this. And I've got all my work there now. The limit as x approaches infinity for this rewritten version, well, let's think, and we can think of taking this limit of each part by itself, the way that limits work, right? We saw that in that first example, part A. So the limit of 2 is simply 2. As x approaches infinity, 1 over x approaches 0. The 7 is just going to stay 7. 3 over x well, we're dividing by x, so that approaches 0. And so we have our answer is 2 over 7. In this case, what originally looked like infinity over infinity actually simplifies or works out to be 2 over 7. Um, and so a good way to, to kind of investigate that, if we were in the classroom, I would I would do this. Put, that, put the graph of this function here up on the screen in Desmos, and you can tell as x goes off to infinity, it's leveling off somewhere, and you could even graph that horizontal line, y equals 2 sevenths, and you can see that graph is tending towards 2 sevenths as x gets larger and larger and larger. Okay, so at this point, uh, you may be reminded of a, you know, maybe the methods you learned in pre-calc that uh, people often learn. And, you know, if you think back here, oh, if as x is approaching infinity, we just take the ratio of the coefficients here, right? It's like the powers of x are the same. So we can ignore the minus 1 and the 3. And once those are ignored, then the x's cancel, that sort of thing. I, most pre-calc teachers um, that I know approach it that way. I don't want you to do that in this class because... We can now explain it using all of the steps. You hadn't learned about limits then. You learned about end behavior, but you didn't 
you know, you weren't thinking about it to the level that we are now. Okay, so I want to see that algebra. Um, and then, you, you know, you're kind of breaking it down, taking the limit. It's, it's, you're really showing all of the thinking that's going on and why it would just be the ratio of the coefficients is much clearer here. Uh, there's even a bigger reason. You're going to see some problems where you're going to have to use this same technique, but it's not going to be with polynomials. So um, it's kind of this is a good chance to practice it. And okay, we're going to see some questions here in a moment. Let's go on. Let's do another one. Spend a long time on that. That's good. Let's do this. So a slight um, adjustment. So limit as x approaches infinity. 2x minus 1, but this time over 7x squared plus 3. So what happens when we make the power of x bigger in the denominator than it was in the numerator? And maybe you know the answer already, but we're going to see all the work. We're going to use the same technique. Okay, we're going to divide uh, each term, all four terms, by the highest power of x in the denominator. Well, that is x squared in this case. Okay, So let's do that. If we divide, and you can see all my work at this point. If you divide each by x squared, well, 2x divided by x squared would be 2 over x. 1, well, that's 1 over x squared. 7x squared gives us the 7. 3 gives us plus 3 over x squared. And now perform the limit. As x approaches infinity, well, this would be 0, this would be 0, 7, 0, 0 over 7. Our answer is 0. Uh, turns out here the denominator, although if you plugged in infinity, it would be infinity over infinity. At least you would think that for a, you know at first. But this denominator is growing much faster than the numerator. They're both going to infinity, but the denominator is going to infinity exponentially faster than the numerator is. And so uh, when we take ratios of very large x values, we'd be able to see, well, the value of the whole thing is actually getting closer to 0 every time we make x bigger. All right. Let's look at one more before we end this video. Uh, mixing it up a little bit more. How about 2x to the 5th minus 1 over 7x to the 3rd plus 3? Again, x is approaching infinity. Now, this time, we made the power of x bigger in the numerator. So what is that going to do? We're going to use the same technique. Okay. We're going to divide by the highest power of x in the denominator. Okay, So we're going to divide by x to the third. When we divide each term by x to the third, what happens? Well, that would give us 2x squared right there, right? 1 over x to the third. That becomes 7 again. 3 over x to the third. So now if we look at it, well, these, these guys will go to 0. That goes to 7. 2x squared, as x is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, this is going to infinity as well. So I'm just going to write that in. Infinity minus 0 over 7 plus 0. Well, infinity divided by 7 is still infinity. This time, the numerator is running away from the denominator every time x gets larger. Uh, the numerator is increasing exponentially times faster. And so this thing just shoots off to positive infinity. One thing, we didn't see it in any of these examples because I didn't want to give too much in these problems. In the homework, you might see problems like this with x approaching negative infinity. If that's the case, just be careful what the powers are after you simplify or rewrite. So like here, if, if we were approaching negative infinity, because it's x squared, that would still be going to positive infinity. 
But if we had an odd power of x with negative infinity, then of course that would be going to negative infinity. So just be, um, you know, watch out for that sort of thing. Okay, let's stop this video here. There's a couple more to wrap up this section next.